What's the point? What is the point? Um, like, it's one of those ones again where where it's it's just like like you're lost for words at some of the ineptitude that there was a, a, a on show out there dug out to player to everywhere. Tonight was an embarrassing night for Aston Villa Football Club. Absolute embarrassing night for Aston Villa Football Club. There on the banks of the Thames. How many more of these embarrassingly poor, turgid, horrible performances where we're dominated from minute one, minute one dominated with nothing going for us. No backbone, no fight, no plan, no tactic, no nothing. All we knew today was to go out there and it was just damage limitation from the kickoff. What are we playing at, Patrick? Well, we've taken a gamble on a rookie manager. Bad manager. Not a rookie, a rookie manager. A he's manager. obviously he's been exposed as a bad manager because he's mm. he's not capable of doing the job himself. They went to the trouble of putting out a video during the week showing them on the training ground. I doubt very much he spends much time on the training ground. The whole thing just stinks. Apparently, I haven't seen any proof of it. Apparently, Mr. Porslow and Mr. Lang left their seats with Mr. Suarez or Mr. Suarez before the end of the game. I hope they're preparing a statement. If they're not preparing a statement, I hope they're not getting pissed because we need answers. We need a solution and we need that answer tomorrow because mm. I'm just sick of it now. Absolutely sick of the same shit, week in, week out, same excuses, week week, week in, week out. I, I was flicking around there, different channels, and nobody seemed to have an interview or, or anything to say, so I obviously was sitting here waiting on you, so I, I just don't know what, what how he can possibly justify his existence. I put a tweet up at halftime, has a manager ever been sacked at halftime, or has a manager ever resigned at halftime, because that's what he should have done today. And if he if he if he had a pair of balls, he doesn't need the fucking money. If he had a pair of balls, he'd walk now. That's what he'd be saying to his players in there. Thanks, lads. Did everything I could, but I'm done. Thanks very much. God bless. Out the door. But he's not going to do that. Nobody does that anymore. So it's it's up to the men who we've entrusted to run our club to make that decision. And when the fans there's there's no are singing, way. When the yeah. fans are singing you'll never wor work again and all that kind of shit that was going on tonight, there really is nothing, nothing to bring him back from where he is. Um, Like Villa Park is going, like Paddy. Paddy, <laughs> Paddy, you could get a lot, a lot of frustration out in Villa Park on Sunday and not even be the loudest man in your row of seats, never mind the stadium. <laughs> you know, so I I think look I I think regardless of what happens, Villa Park at the weekend is going to be absolutely bonkers if if something isn't changed. Um, and look look let's let's call, look I, I, and I know I know I know I know before anyone starts getting at me, I'm not exonerating Stephen Jared in any way, but players quit tonight. Pl players quit in the second half tonight. I believe so they don't, because they don't believe. Yeah. In what they're being asked to do, not because yeah. they're bad players, or not because they don't have heart, they don't believe in what they're being asked to do. Mm. I felt that I felt they gave a, they gave time to Steven Gerrard at, at times. I feel that they that there was signs, and I didn't want to say it after the after the Nottingham Forest game. I did not want to say it, or I felt that they that there was a bit of frustration or a bit of like, well, I'm just going to go through the motions here because this guy is doesn't have a clue. That's not exactly what I want to see either. But specifically, this comes from the top down. This guy, this guy in the dugout was a fantastic leader for his country and for his club. And he can't band a group of men together because he's not like he comes across as somebody who just isn't interested anymore. Well, he thinks he's bigger than the club. That's the way he comes across to me. I don't know. It's it's really, really, really strange. Like what has happened? Like 3 0 versus Fulham. I'm not denigrating Fulham at all. Absolutely not. Every team you go to, you should expect a hard game when you're playing away from home. I do not expect. I do not expect 3-0 against Fulham. I do not. I will never, ever. It will never be acceptable to lose 3-0 to Fulham. 
And this is not yeah. me giving out about Fulham. We're talking about statures of clubs and so on and so forth. 3 0 against Fulham in the championship was probably about plaza. It was probably you know somewhere we could we could probably make an excuse for. I cannot make an excuse for 3 0 against Fulham when we've got international after international after international in our team now. When we've gone away and we spent a bazillion euros on players and we and and these players can play football. Like these players can play football. And like mm. players who go on and say, the players aren't good enough. Lads, they're the players we have. We're not signing 11 players. We can surely get a manager that can make these 11 players some way semblance of a decent team. And we've had a guy in here for the bones of 40 matches who hasn't done it. A book stops at the top. And the top of the playing p- pyramid is Steven Gerrard. You can talk about yeah. Perzlozzi or Lang as all you like. That is beside the point. If we sack Perzlozzi in the morning, it doesn't change what happens on the field. Forget about it. I don't want to hear about that tonight. I don't want to hear Perslow tonight. Perslow is going to get us a lovely new stadium like he's supposed to. Perslow is going to get us a lovely new training ground like he's supposed to. I want a man who knows how to run that inside there. But I also want, like, uh, the club need to make this. But he can't be. He cannot be in charge of the replacement. He cannot be. I don't care who's in charge of the replacement. They can't get it any worse. But and they're, they're talking to Pochettino and Tuchel and yeah. Uno Emery. They're good managers. So that's yeah. that's that's. So if they are the managers that they're speaking to, and if they're the managers, they can get in the door. Well, then he's done a good job. I don't care who it is. I don't care who makes is, the decision. I have, I have also heard Rafa Benitez today. So you I don't want Rafa Benitez I, because Gabi, someone, I think it was Gabby Agbonahor, Dion Dublin said it in the media. I don't that's want why. any more. I don't want any more, Mister Porzlo's mate. I don't, I don't. I I want a proper world class manager installed. To dish dish out what should be dished out, get rid of the shit and bring in players worthy of wearing that short, which we are not. We you're you're bang on. I didn't get a word in there, but you're bang on. We saw players down tools tonight. That's the first time in six years I've seen players down tools since we were relegated. I haven't seen players down tools like we did tonight. They were just did not want to know. Did not want to know. There's not a whole pile that can be said about the match. There's, like we were just, we were just awful from start to finish. Absolutely nothing. The one thing I will say, when one of the big six uh, handled the ball one yard from the fella taking the shot, it better be a fucking penalty next weekend because there, there's a fucking double standards going on here w- without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, Ben Chilwell how- doesn't get sent off last weekend. Yeah, he gets a yellow card. The whole everybody piles in behind him. And says no, 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 it was only a yellow card. Poor Ben Chilwell. Just because he's back from injury, and they want and they don't want any negativity, oh, okay. and want him to get minutes in games before he goes to the World Cup. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry, I'm gone completely off. Um, mm. uh, I'm a I'm a fighter, and I won't quit. Where have I heard that this week already as well? <laughs> you know, good God. I'm sorry. I'm I'm like this is this is really frustrating, guys. It's re- and I'm mm. sure it's frustrating for Steven Gerrard. But sometimes you got to put your hand up and you got to say, lads, I'm not sure that I can make this happen. I'm not sure I can make this happen. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we have to be angry on the podcast because I much prefer being happy. Look, I'd, I'd much prefer to come on here and talk about a performance of some sort, but there's been absolutely nothing to talk about. It was disjointed from start to finish. Absolutely disjointed. Like, they attacked us down our right-hand side for the whole first half. And the minute we dragged fellas across, there was room everywhere for them to come attack at us through the middle. And where did we make our change at the start of the game? On the right-hand side of the field. Down our right-hand side. Like, the changes we make are literally every single week, the changes we make are, there's a spotlight shone in them, and it's like a magnifying glass to the sun, and there's a hole burnt through the team sheet. Yeah. Like that's that's what happens, and it's been it's been something I've been looking at and been been trying to like. God, gone are the days where I could sit down and I could watch a game three or four times and try and do. Like when was the last time I did a tactical analysis of things? Because I know I'm not going to see anything outside of the first five minutes. It's going to make me think anything different. When was the last time I sat down and did? Remember last year I had I had a, a chart of how many substitutions were made, who was subs in and out, what formation we played, what's it. I have no interest in doing that anymore because mm. I don't think that there's any benefit into figuring out a tactic that does not work. It does not work. It's gone. For me, the lust of that is just gone. There is There are tactics you can play in this league that will work. There are tactics that you have to mold to your players. We have a tactic here and we're putting square pegs in round holes. And God, there is nobody in this world that will tell me that we can't put that 11 players that went out in the field together 
in it or, or put of the 25 players we have in our squad we can't put 11 players that go out in the field and are some way coherent and, and, and semblant when we go out in the field and have some sort of consistency for, for over a five to ten game period because we've never seen that with Steven Gerrard ever 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 it's been feast famine uh, or it's been elation or debauchery and the elation has been few and far between we are now four wins in 22 we are now two wins in eight, two wins in 19 against uh, against teams that are currently in the Premier League you know you take away the Burnley you take away the Norwich things are looking absolutely dire guys and I've sat in my hands an awful lot about this and I try and be happy and clappy about it when you see stuff like this there is no one in the world that can convince me that you couldn't get bloody Brian Kerr in to put some sort of shape on this team and not try and put the team into your shape. There is a, there's, there's, yeah, look, it's just it. It's really frustrating. It's really, really frustrating, you know, um, because we have one of the best groups of players. Objectively, we have one of the best groups of players we've had in donkey's years. Uh, we, we went through, we said it. We said it. This is a better group of players than we had under Martin O'Neill, but Martin O'Neill was a significantly better coach than we have at this moment in time. And that's the difference. That's the difference. Um, yeah. It did, make, it did make me laugh too, Neil. <laughs> Fairness to Shane. <laughs> Thank, oh, thanks, God. Shane, for... Uh, for uh, <laughs> and look, Matt, Matt's in again to try and make us feel better. Matt, Matt, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're a gentleman, oh, Matt. I, Thank you. I really appreciate it, that. It's extremely hard. We, we, we had nearly 400 people on here talk, like wanting us to talk about and dissect a game which is undissectable because mm -hmm. all we can talk about is what needs to happen. Not not tomorrow morning, not Monday morning. There's no more chances. There is no more chances. It's time. Time now. That big red button is there. Press it. Get him the fuck out of there because there is nothing happening under this manager. The, the, funny, the funny thing about this as well uh, is... It'll be really interesting to see what the national media in the UK see, says tomorrow. All right, because will there, you know will there, be, will there be, but listen, 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 That's what I'm saying. Who's going to be the person that's going to quote and say, well, Aston Villa threw that away. Should the red card completely change the game? And should Tyrone Mings, of course, you can't rely on Tyrone Mings, of course. That wasn't the story of this game. The story of this game was though Fulham had their foot in their throat from five minutes in. That was the story of this game. And that's what I'm saying. There will be a multitude, a multitude of articles written tomorrow. Of course there will. There will be lots that will say, is, it, is, is Gerard's time up, will be the question. As opposed to saying, listen, this lead statistics are absolutely off the table. They've fallen off the table and they're all over the floor. That's, that's where they are at the moment. But people will look at this game in, in, in a silo and say, oh, well, Tyrone Mings, is he really the caliber of player that we need? Is the, Douglas Luiz, you know, did that, did he, is he after letting his manager down by getting the right card? And that's sorry. That's that's why I was. Uh, that's why I'm so frustrated as well. Is because there will be people running interference tomorrow. When the reality of the situation is, this has been bad for months, 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 calendar year. It's been bad. It's bad since he came in. There's a handful, a handful of bright sparks and green shoots that we can talk about. And even at that, the best of them was going two nil up at Man City, and his decisions fucked it up. He can't manage a game in game. No way, no how. His decision to drop Maddie Cash today, I thought, was a poor one. If he felt Maddie Cash could only play one game a week, it should have been today. I, look, I just, I'm, I'm absolutely shocked at what I looked at tonight. In in more ways than one, um, he just, it, it just like th there's there's no other end to this other than he goes before another player wearing claret and blue steps out in that pitch on Sunday. If he does, it's going to be the most toxic atmosphere I'll have ever experienced there. And I'm not looking forward to it. I wasn't looking forward to it before the fucking match. What did you say? Ahead of my point. I was just, sorry, I, I, didn't, I, I, I clicked it up by mistake. I didn't want to knock you off mid-floor, but I, I, I haven't, I haven't hit that point, Paddy, did Gerard Port after that. <laughs> I've been off uh, to drink. They've just driven me to drink. So, so here it is. I just, I just had enough. No, look, yeah, as I say, yeah. Um, 
I don't know where I don't know where and and when things are going to happen, but it can't. Like like I suppose. Look, we're talking here with piss and vinegar, and we're talking. We're 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 being very animated. Um, but like. It has to happen, though, doesn't it, Paddy? I suppose, be, be honest with yourself. Like, is there any way you can see him taken to the field on, on Sunday? After the away fans, two weeks in a row, booing him. Number one, was it, did they boo a, a section of the away fans booed? Then he has a go at the whole thing, lest we forget, on Chelsea, yeah. uh, against Chelsea. Yeah. And then there there was, I, 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 read on, I read on Twitter, there was some pretty, pretty, you know... Uncomplimentary things sang sang from the st- from the stands in, in Fulham today by the away fans. The, our owners were in attendance. Um, our brain trust was in attendance. Well, one of them were in attendance. Yeah, but the brain trust is in attendance as well as in Lang and mm-hmm. uh, and and Christian Persler. And I don't I don't mean that facetiously. That's who we have in in our mm-hmm. upper management leaderships leadership um, senior leadership. Um. They, there's there's no way there's no way that that the club statement doesn't come tomorrow. Or I think it probably has to come tomorrow, really. But then Imagine, again, what's what's to be won by it? Do you do you, do do you send him out to the fans in Villa Park? Do you send the team out to the fans in Villa Park? Is it fair in the team? I suppose the team do deserve a modicum of it as well at times because at the end of the day, I've said it for months as well. We've nobody standing up there to try and take up by the scruff of the neck on the field to say, "Hi lads, we'll take the rollicking from him in the dressing room, but we need to change something here because what he's telling us ain't right." I know it might sound very Hollywood. And Sylvester Sloan from uh, what is it, Road to Glory or whatever is that Escape to Glory? It might sound very much like that, but surely there's somebody who can do that in the field. Or has the game gone that facile that it's not able to? The, the players aren't able to do that anymore. I don't know. I'm struggling here, guys. I'm struggling big time. Mm. I've lo- I've lost my trail of thought there. But I was gonna say something to you now, but I'm I'm just I'm just of the opinion. Oh, I, I what I, what I said to you was I wasn't expecting him to go until Monday at this stage. But I think after that performance, there's no there's no comeback. There's absolutely no comeback. We went to Craven Cottage. No, we the got was this lousy t shirt. The home of the happy clappers, and that's what we come away with. Yeah. Albeit, give them a little bit of credit. Or, or a big good. bit of credit. They're not a bad side. The only yeah. one I'd like to call out is Alexander Mitrovic, because if they if they look at that incident again, like they couldn't. Get, they couldn't get VAR VAR working for about three minutes for Michael Oliver to look at it for for what seven seconds maybe he looked at it. There was a coming together of two bodies there, and Mitrovic knew exactly what he's doing. It's time we stamped that out of the game. It's an absolute fucking disgrace. And Mitrovic has been trying that for years, and nothing was ever done to him, and it needs to. Is is that an actual quote from Stephen Gerrard? Is, well, not a quote, but is that this, is that a synopsis of what Stephen Gerrard said that he's ignoring the fan reaction? It wouldn't like, surprise like, me. Like, like that's like, what? Why be so contemptuous towards the people that essentially are going to be here long after you? Why be so contemptuous towards it? That's the second or third time now we start calling the fans. Remember the last man who started call, started giving out about the fans, and the man before him. Like there needs to be, uh, there, there there needs to be a we're not fickle. We just don't like you, bed sheet. Like you know, if that's going to be the case, um, that that's annoying. Like once again, did, did can someone please put in the comments and say, did did Stephen Gerrard intimate that he's ignoring the fans' reaction? Did he actually say that in an interview? Because did did he did he take off his shoe and shove it in his mouth again? It's basic stuff every time, every time. Why can't he just say things without? Being stupid, I'm sorry to use that word because he's not a stupid guy, but why can't he just say things that are uncontroversial? My God, did he say that? No, he didn't. He didn't say that. It was McGinn. It was McGinn that said that. But still, McGinn should, McGinn's a captain. He shouldn't be ignoring the fan reaction either. Well, he shouldn't be talking about the fan reaction because the fan reaction wasn't about him. It was about the manager. So he, he is right to be ignoring the fan reaction. If the fans are on the manager's back, it's the player's job to do the player's job, not worry about what they think about the manager. So I'm, I'm okay with that. It's it's just this this same old shit of rolling out fucking Steven Gerrard talking absolute bullshit. Um, talk, talking about an, an, a no-blame no philosophy and then coming out and blaming players. Like, 
Mm. Not blaming referees when he blatantly blamed referees when he was was at Rangers. All of these things, he's full of shit. Full of shit. Done with him. Absolutely done with him. There was nothing there today to tell me that this man is going to lead us into the future. Absolutely nothing. We didn't get our moment of magic, Paddy. How were we ever going to win when we didn't get our moment of magic? You know? Um... Right, lads, look, none of this is doing any of us any favours. Well, not mu- much favours. Um, I said before in the team sheet tantrum, let's keep this to the game and not talk about the manager. We've barely mentioned the game at all tonight because the game is inconsequential. It's great. Look, and you know what? I do want to say we've had a couple of Fulham fans. I've seen them in the comments. Thanks so much. They've been very gracious. And I, want, I do want to say that, listen, guys, you guys are making a great fist of it with a manager who knows what he's doing. Marco Silva is a good manager, managed in this league before, and he's proven he can do it. You guys are now ninth in the league with 15 points. You've scored 20 goals. Uh, you've scored 19 goals. You've conceded 20. You have a minus one goal difference. That's absolutely fine. Aston Villa have nine points from 11 games. We have a minus nine goal difference. But we've only scored seven bloody goals. What more evidence... What more evidence do multi-multi-billionaires need to know that if you need to protect your investment, 15 million might be a great way to protect your investment because we're now level on points with Wolverhampton Wanderers and level on goal difference with Wolverhampton Wanderers, nine points each. We are effectively in the drop zone. Neil, if, 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 I, if I leave that stadium on Sunday with Steven Gerrard still in charge, we'll be in the bottom three. I have no doubt. No doubt whatsoever. And who the fuck is going to want the job at that stage? And that is my biggest worry. That I, is my biggest worry. I, I'm, you know, I, well, actually, I don't know if I ever intimated this. I think that number one, money talks, and number two, I think there really is this. If there is a project that can be sold, if the the players are in the team, I think managers chase stuff like that. I'm not too worried. Look, like, okay, look, it might be Pochettino, and I put out a tweet. Oh no, I didn't. It's in my draft still. That was meant to. I was meant to send it yesterday. I have a tweet in my draft site. At least I don't think I put it out saying I'm not going to fixate on one manager if Stephen Gerrard goes, because that's we always do it. All of us as fans do. We like back in the day we fixated on Basuma. Basuma didn't come in. Mm. We fixated on X player, or Y player, Conor Gallagher this year didn't come in. I'm not going to fixate on the manager. There are more than one way to skin a cat. Specifically, well, there's the four there. We've named four. I would take either yeah. of the four. Well, I, would I, would, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take Benitez. I will. I will come on here and be. Oh, well, um, I didn't. I didn't suggest yeah. Benitez when we spoke about it yesterday. There was uh, there was the two obvious ones: uh, Unai Emery, um, Maurizio Tuchel Pochettino, and Pochettino. Uh, Andre Villas Boas. Oh, sorry. And, yes, that was the one. And, and, and Thomas Frank. They, they they were the four of my shortlist yesterday. So. They're they're the four that that I'm hedging my bets on. I don't want Rafa Benitez. Absolutely, do not want Rafa Benitez. I don't want I don't want a Sam Allardyce or a Sean Dyche either. I yes. want a football man. I want a, I want I want the dog. Sorry, that that's the wrong thing to say because they're both football men, obviously. But what I want is a world class manager to come in and turn this around. Not now. Let him have his transfer window. Give him a few quid. Let him change this up. Let him bring back the players that have been ostracised by our current manager. The likes of Morgan Sanson. The likes of Nakamba, who's going to have to be thrown in there next week, maybe. The likes of... Um, what do you call that guy? Gilbert. Gilbert. <laughs> like we, we had a centre-half playing right back tonight. And we have a right back. Sitting mm. there doing nothing. Apparently, I'm talking pish, as they say in Scotland. I do it, yeah. Um, anyway, nor do I care. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. look, that that's what I want. I want I want one of those four managers. Oh, if not, he's, if he's not, nice. I want a headhunted manager. Yeah. Albeit uh, that. Yeah, he wants to know if if you think we can get Pep. Yeah, I, I, do, I don't think we can get Pep Guardiola, do, do you? I, I don't think we can get Pep Guardiola, no. No, uh, but those, like, uh, of the players that you mentioned... Two, maybe maybe uh, he should stop drinking. <laughs> two of them were out of uh, were out of contract, and two of them were with clubs. Um, yeah. Pochettino and Villas Boas being out of clubs, and um, two of them were obviously in contract at this moment in time. Um, like, it's... 
I, yeah, as I say, I don't think I think there's more than one way to skin a cat with, with, with a new manager. Um, but as I said, now we're at the stage whereby, like, you could have got like if you there are ducks in a row and you were getting you were getting rid of Stephen Jared, it was before this game. It was really was before this game, I think, and it was a situation whereby uh, you win the new cycle. I don't think whatever you do now, you can't you can't win this new cycle from the point of view that you got. If you get rid of him today, you're going to be waiting. You're going to have an interim manager. And look at the way that's working out for Wolves. And it's like, I'm not going to say it's badly handled. I can understand why they gave him the game today because we should have been able to put a game, game against Fulham, put up a game against Fulham today. And we weren't. We weren't mm. able to do it. Just weren't able to do it. Well, um, if, uh, so, if our I, owners I, I, are, are sitting in their limousine head, heading back to wherever they are in London, uh, talking to each other on the phone, the question should be, what does Pochettino want? Can we give it to him? Okay, let's let's just press the button, give him the job. If not, let's go. Let's get Unai Emery in there. A little bit worried about it, Andre Villas Boas, um, not not having a team for so long. I thought he would have been snapped up in the meantime, but look, it's it, it's a decision that's going to have to be made now, not in the future, not at the World Cup. It has to be made now. If, if it means there's an interim manager on Sunday, so be it. But somebody needs to spend the money. Somebody needs to buy somebody out of a contract or give them what they want to get the right person in starting next Monday or Tuesday and prepare themselves for Newcastle next weekend. Paddy, I got a good laugh. And Phil, this is not against you at all. It's just the way myself and Paddy feel about with certain Mr. Keane. But uh, Phil, this is not against you. Phil says, Roy Keane won't take no crap. I... Uh, I will not. I I'll, I'll end the podcast if Roy Keane was our manager. It'd be done. It'd be gone. I wouldn't be sitting there. There's no way I could so, sit there and talk. So would my so would my season ticket and every shirt that I would ever wear if Roy Keane was the manager of Aston Villa. I feel I similarly. You. I feel similarly about another name that came up a couple of times there as well. Jose Mourinho. I don't. I don't want another shit show. I don't want another circus. Yeah. I want the manager who manages people, who manages the game properly, who manages. Everything got to do with the club, not just the personalities, not just the Philip Coutinho's. Just get our act together, get a proper manager in there who can get the best out of what we have and improve it in January. End of story. Yeah. Um, and look, guys, we we 100% know we're talking here. I, I did say that there's more than one way to skin a cat with a manager. I don't know what manager they're going to sign. The names that we mentioned were names that have come up in the past or have come up just, just recently. Now, we are not canvassing here saying that I think Aston Villa are going to sign Pochettino. I think Aston Villa are going to sign. No, we're not. We're fire, We're shooting. Like, it's quarter past 10 after we've lost 3-0 to, um, after we've lost 3-0 to Fulham. Things aren't exactly rational at this moment in time, no matter how much we try and do, try and do it. It just ain't happening because at the moment we're searching. What we're doing is we're searching for a solution. It's the, amongst the midst of chaos. And I completely understand that. And, and uh, I, you know, it's difficult not to be like that. And in the morning, I'll probably still look at it and I go, I, I want Aston Villa to get the best manager that's available. I don't understand why Aston Villa can't go and get the best, best manager that's available because... Sometimes you've got blind loyalty and blind love for your club. And I prefer to sit here every single day and have blind loyalty and blind love blind love for my club than to, you know, be wishy-washy, falling in, falling out of, of love with it, or even more still, you know, being somebody that's uh, paid to be part of this club and blame the fans and blame the, the players every time that there's a microphone put in front of me because uh, I, I don't think that's uh, that's that's the right thing to do. Guys, I think we're going to end it. Look, I, there will be lots more podcasts over the coming days and weeks. Would, would Aston Villa do me a favour? I have my first Saturday away with no child or anything in bloody a year. Do not sack him on Saturday. I can't be looking at my phone. I need to leave my phone alone. It's one mental health day is essentially I'm having on Saturday before I have a breakdown. So if I said it would be nice enough not to let not to sack him on Saturday or not to have anything silly go on on Saturday, <laughs> I'm okay with that. Okay, do not announce a new manager. If you announce a new manager on Saturday without me being around, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm angry now? Where can you see that? Uh, look, guys. I know it's it's a difficult one. It's, it's, the it's, thing it's, is, if it's if it's not if it's not done now or it's not done in the morning, we're going to be looking at it Monday morning. 
because w- what's the point in in changing it over the weekend? I I don't know what they're going to achieve by it. I I'd nearly net I'd nearly let and I don't mean this in a, a direct no I'm not even going to say it, but we we we'll get somebody else in to manage the team on Sunday who has nothing to do with what's going on and will probably do a better job. Uh, heaven forbid if they feel the need. I'm on my way over on Sunday morning. I don't even need to. T- I don't need to talk to players. Uh, uh, I know. I know exactly what I want from each and every one of them. I'll tell them in the dressing room, and I'll ruffle a few feathers, and we'll we'll see we'll we'll see a different strike force. As that as Danny H says here, board tank to manage. We don't even have board tank to manage anymore. He's gone off to the assistant manager in Ghana, so we don't even have George board tank to manage. That's where we are at the moment. But uh, Mila Yednak, put Yednak in there. Yeah, wouldn't that that give everyone a field day? They brought their loans manager in. It'd be kind of like when they brought Mark Warburton when Mark Warburton came out of an accountant's office to manage who was it Forest first or Brentford or I can't remember who it was. Not a bad manager, but Rangers, video. yeah, Rangers. You manage Rangers as well. Um, right, lads. Listen, look, we've been here. We've done an awful lot. We've uh, or we've we've said an awful lot of nothing. Other than bluster and hot air, we completely understand that. There was 400 and nearly 500 watching there at one stage. Really appreciate a thumbs up on the video here. We've made Egypt out of ourselves for the last 31 minutes, 30 seconds. Least you could do is give us a thumbs up on the podcast. But I do really appreciate everyone coming in here. Sometimes, you know, as I say, it's we get a bit ratty on the podcast over what we've seen on the TV. But don't, uh, as I say, you guys are always here to bring us right and to, and to give us a bit, a few laughs. There was a couple of laughs we got there to kind of lighten the mood. So I really appreciate that. I really appreciate every single one of you tuning into the podcast. Um, look, hit the hit the subscribe button, hit the hit the bell because I'll be wet, ready to go live at the drop of a hat if anything if anything comes tomorrow. I will be on my phone doing it, but still, um, I don't want to miss anything, and I'd love to be able to discuss anything with you guys via the comments. So, um, thanks so much for everything. Look, an absolutely devastating loss. I think it's not, let's not forget, a devastating loss for Aston Villa, a good performance from Fulham. And Fulham should be really proud of, of, of a 3 0 win against Aston Villa. And that's saying Aston Villa are this giant of a team or whatever, not, certainly not at this moment in time. But, you know, Fortress, uh, Craven Cottage, if you guys can pick up points there ev- all this year, you guys will be absolutely fine at, as I say, in your ninth position now. And we're not. And we need to pick up points. And we can't seem to buy one at the moment. So thanks everybody for watching. Please, everybody, stay safe, stay happy about other things, and most of all, regardless of what's happening, we will always say, up the villa. Up the villa.